Hello again, and welcome to your Story Corner, the podcast. Wherever you are, whoever you are, you are welcome here to this safe space, designed and created specifically to help you relax and unwind, maybe work through a little bit of anxiety, and most importantly, Try and settle you down for a good night's sleep with a bedtime story. Or maybe an afternoon kip. If you are new here, welcome. This podcast, we explore some of the world's most famous books. with Some amazing facts and trivia you may not know. But also reading you some of your favourite bedtime stories. And thank you for everybody who's been streaming and downloading. In the short time we've been doing this, we now have over 5,000 downloads. So thank you. If you would like to know more about Your Story Corner, you can visit our website, yourstorycorner.com. And don't forget, you can join us for a live bedtime story every other night on TikTok, where we go live from 10pm UK time. We hope you've had a cracking Easter (laughs) and are looking forward to some warmer days ahead as we enter the fourth month of the year. Someone who likes warm sunny days is Winnie the Pooh and that is today's Story Corner episode. We pick up the adventures of our favourite bear from Chapter 2. And if you would like to hear Chapter 1 and hear some amazing facts and trivia and how Winnie the Pooh got his name inspired by a real-life bear, then you can listen back to the previous episode. But now it's time to settle down. Here by the warmth of the crackling fireplace. And if you can, if it's time for going to bed, just put the device to one side. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply. Focus on the sound of my voice. And remember, you are not alone. And no matter whatever is going on today, You did it, and it will pass, and you are going to be okay, you're going to be okay. So settle, close your eyes, and paint the pictures of a story in your mind, bring them to life, as you enjoy this bedtime story. Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Mill Chapter 2 In which Pooh goes visiting and gets into a tight place. Edward Bear, known to his friends as Winnie the Pooh, or Pooh for short, was walking through the forest one day, humming proudly to himself. He had made up a little hum that very morning as he was doing his stoutness exercises in front of the glass. Tra-la-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la, as he stretched up as high as he could go. And then, tra-la-la, tra-la-la, oh, mother, (laughs) as he tried to reach his toes. After breakfast, He had said it over and over to himself until he had learnt it off by heart. And now he was humming it right through properly. And it went like this. Dra-la-la-la-la, dra-la-la-la-la, rum-tum, tilly-um-tum, tiddly-tiddly, iddly-diddly, (laughs) rum-tum-tum. Well... He was humming this hum to himself and walking along happily 
wondering what everybody else was doing and what it felt like being somebody else when suddenly came to a sandy bank and in the bank was a large hoe. Ah, said Pooh, if I know anything about anything and that hoe means a rabbit, he said, and rabbit means company, he said, and company, well, means food, and listening to me humming and such like, rum tum tilly um And so he bent down, put his head into the hole, and called out, Is anybody at home? There was a sudden scuffling noise from inside the hole, and then silence. What I said was, Is anybody at home? called out Pooh. No, said a voice, and then added, You needn't shout so loud. I heard you quite well the first time. Oh, bother, said Boo. Isn't there anybody here at all? Nobody. Winnie the Pooh took his head out of the hole and thought for a little, and he thought to himself, There must be somebody there, because somebody must have said nobody. And so he put his head back in the hole and said, Hello, Rabbit. Isn't that you? Uh, no, said Rabbit, in a different sort of voice this time. But isn't that Rabbit's voice? I don't think so, said Rabbit. It isn't meant to be. Oh, said Pooh. He took his head out of the hole and had another think. And then he put it back and said, Well, could you very kindly tell me where Rabbit is? Oh, he's gone to see his friend Pooh Bear, who is a great friend of his. Oh, but this is me, said the bear, very much surprised. What sort of me? A Pooh Bear. Are you sure? said Rabbit, still more surprised. Oh, quite, quite sure. Oh, well then, come in. So Pooh pushed and pushed and pushed his way through the hole, and at last he got in. You are quite right, said Rabbit, looking at him all over. It is you. Glad to see you. Oh, who do you think it was? Well, I wasn't sure. You know how it is in the forest. One can't have anybody coming into one's house. One has to be careful. What about a mouthful of something? Pooh always liked a little something at eleven o'clock in the morning, and he was very glad to see Rabbit getting out the plates and mugs. And when Rabbit said, Honey or condensed milk with your bread? He was so excited that he said both. <laughs> and then, so as not to seem greedy, he added, But don't bother about the bread, please. And for a long time after that, he said nothing. Until, at last, humming to himself in a rather sticky voice, he got up, shook Rabbit lovingly by the paw, and said that he must be going. Oh, must you? said Rabbit politely. Well, said Boo, I could stay a little longer if, um... And he tried very hard to look in the direction of the larder. As a matter of fact, said Rabbit, I was going out myself directly. Oh, well then, I'll be going... Goodbye, Rabbit. Well, goodbye. If you're sure you won't have any more. Oh, is there any more? 
asked Pooh quickly. Rabbit took the covers off the dishes and said, No, there wasn't. I thought not, said Pooh, nodding to himself. Well, goodbye. I mustn't be going on. And so he started to climb out of the hole. He pulled with his front paws and pushed with his back paws. And in a little while, his nose was out in the open again, and then his ears, and then his front paws, and then his shoulders. And then... Oh, help, said Boo. I'd better go back. Oh, bother, said Boo. I shall have to go on. I can't do either, said Boo. Oh, help and bother. Now, by this time, Rabbit wanted to go for a walk, too, and finding the front door full, he went out by the back door, came round to Pooh Bear, and looked at him. Hello, are you stuck? he asked. No, said Boo carelessly, just resting and thinking and humming to myself. Uh, Well, here, uh, give us a paw. Boo Bear stretched out a paw, and Rabbit pulled, and pulled, and pulled. Oh, cried Boo, you're hurting. Well, the fact is, said Rabbit, you're stuck. Well, it all comes, said Boo crossly, of not having front doors big enough. It comes, said Rabbit sternly, of eating too much. I thought at the time, said Rabbit, only I didn't like to say anything, said Rabbit. And one of us was eating too much, said Rabbit. And I knew it wasn't me, he said. Well, well, I shall go and fetch Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin lived at the other end of the forest, and when he came back with Rabbit, he saw the front half of Pooh and said, Silly old bear, in such a loving voice that everybody felt quite hopeful again. I was just beginning to think, said Bear, sniffing slightly, (laughs) that Rabbit might never be able to use his front door again. I should hate that, he said. So should I, said Rabbit. Use his front door again, said Christopher Robin. Of course he'll use his front door again. Oh, good, said Rabbit. Well, if we can't pull you out, Boo, we might push you back. Rabbit scratched his whiskers thoughtfully and pointed out that when once Boo was pushed back, he was back. And, of course, nobody was more glad to see Pooh than he was. Still, there it was. Some lived in trees, and some lived underground. And, you mean, I'll never get out, said Pooh. I mean, said Rabbit, that having got so far, it seems a pity to waste it. Christopher Robin nodded. Then there's only one thing to be done, he said. We shall have to wait for you to get thin again. How long does getting thin take? asked Boo anxiously. Well, about a week, I should think. But I can't stay here for a week. Well, you can't stay here, all right, silly old bear. It's getting you out, which is so difficult. We'll read to you, said Rabbit cheerfully. And I hope it won't snow, he added. And I say, old fellow, you're taking up a good deal of room in my house. Do you mind if I use your back legs as a towel horse? Because, I I mean, there they are, doing nothing, and it would be very convenient just to hang the towels on them. A week, said Boo gloomily. What about meals? 
I'm afraid no meals, said Christopher Robin, because of getting thin quicker. But we will read to you. Bear began to sigh, and then found he couldn't, because he was so tightly stuck, and a tear rolled down his eye as he said, Then would you read a sustaining book, such as would help and comfort a wedged bear in great tightness? <laughs> so, for a week, Christopher Robin read that sort of book at the north end of Pooh, and Rabbit hung his washing on the south end. And in between, Bear felt himself getting slenderer and slenderer. And at the end of the week, Christopher Robin said, Now! So he took a hold of Boo's front paws, and Rabbit took a hold of Christopher Robin, and all of Rabbit's friends and relations took a hold of Rabbit, and they all pulled together. And for a long time, Pooh only said, Oh, and oh. And then, all of a sudden, he said, Pop, just as if a cork was coming out of a bottle. And Christopher Robin and Rabbit and all Rabbit's friends and relations went head over heels backwards. And on the top of them, came Winnie the Pooh, free. So, with a nod of thanks to his friends, he went on with his walk through the forest, humming proudly to himself. But Christopher Robin looked after him lovingly and said to himself, Silly old bear. And so ends chapter two of Winnie the Pooh. Well, if you made it through the first chapter, I hope you enjoyed that. Feeling more relaxed and you are settling down for a good night's sleep. I hope you are close. If you are enjoying this podcast wherever you are streaming, we would be so grateful if you could rate us. All you need to do is just press the stars on whatever app you are listening to us. And on some apps, like Apple Podcasts, you can leave us a review. It all helps us reach more people. And thank you for all your support. Now, are you ready for another chapter? Good. Get even more cosy. Here we go. This is Winnie the Pooh, Chapter 3, in which Pooh and Piglet go hunting and nearly catch a woozle. Piglet lived in a very grand house in the middle of a beech tree, and the beech tree was in the middle of the forest. Piglet lived in the middle of the house. Next to his house was a piece of broken board which had Trespasses W on it. When Christopher Robin asked Piglet what it meant, he said it was his grandfather's name and had been in the family for a long time. Christopher Robin said you couldn't be called Trespassers W. And Piglet said yes, you could, because his grandfather was, and it was short for Trespassers Will, which was short for Trespassers William. 
and his grandfather had had two names in case he lost one. Trespasses after an uncle, and William after trespasses. <laughs> I've got two names, said Christopher Roman carelessly. Well, th th there you go. That p p p proves it, said Piglet. One fine winter's day, when Piglet was brushing away the snow in front of his house, he happened to look up, and there was Winnie the Pooh. Pooh was walking around and around in a circle, thinking of something else. And when Piglet called to him, he just went on walking. Hello, said Piglet. What are you doing, Pooh? Hunting, said Pooh. Oh, uh, hunting what? Tracking something, said Winnie the Pooh, very mysteriously. D -d 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 Tracking what? said Piglet, coming closer. That's just what I ask myself. I ask myself what? What do you think will be the answer, Pooh? I shall have to wait until I catch up with it, said Winnie the Pooh. Now, look here, Piglet. He pointed to the ground in front of him. What do you see there? Oh, d -d -d tracks, said Piglet. P -p 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 Paw marks. He gave a little squeak of, a sky of excitement. Oh, Pooh! Do you think it's a weasel? It may be, said Boo. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. You never can tell with poor marks. With these few words he went on tracking, and Piglet, after watching him for a minute or two, ran after him. Winnie the Pooh had come to a sudden stop, and was bending over the tracks in a puzzled sort of way. What's the matter, Pooh? asked Piglet. That's a funny thing, said the bear. But there seems to be two animals now. This, whatever it was, has been joined by another, whatever it is. And the two of them are now proceeding in company. Would you mind coming with me, Piglet, in case they turn out to be hostile animals? Piglet scratched his ear in a nice sort of way and said that he had nothing to do until Friday and would be delighted to come in case it really was a woozle. You mean, in case it really is two woozles, said Winnie the Boo. And Piglet said that anyhow he had nothing to do until Friday. So off they went together. There was a small spinny of large trees just here, and it seemed as if the two woozles... That is what they were, and been going around the spinny. So round the spinny went Boo and Piglet after them. Piglet passing the time by telling Boo what his grandfather Trespasses W had done to remove stiffness after tracking, and how his grandfather Trespasses W had suffered in his later years from shortness of breath and other matters of interest. And Pooh, wondering what a grandfather was like, and if, perhaps, this was two grandfathers they were after now, and if so, whether he would be allowed to take one home and keep it. And what would Christopher Robin say? And still, the tracks went on in front of them. Suddenly, Winnie the Pooh stopped and pointed exactly in front of him. Oh, look, 
what? said Piglet with a jump. And then to show that he hadn't been frightened, he jumped up and down once or twice more, in a sort of exercising sort of way. The tracks, said Boo. A third animal has joined the other two. Boo, cried Piglet. Do, 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 do you think it's another woo woo woozle? Oh, no, said Boo, because it makes different marks. It is either two woozles and one, or it might be a whistle or two, as it might be whistles and one, and if so, a woozle. Let us continue to follow them. So they went on, feeling just a little anxious now, in case the three animals in front of them were of hostile intent. And Piglet wished very much that his grandfather T.W. were there, instead of elsewhere. And Pooh thought how nice it would be if they met Christopher Robin suddenly, but quite accidentally, and only because he liked Christopher Robin so much. And then, all of a sudden, Winnie the Pooh stopped again and licked the tip of his nose in a cooling manner, for he was feeling more hot and anxious than ever in his life before. There were four animals in front of them. Do she, Piglet, look at their tracks. Three, as it were, woozles, and one, as it was, whistle. Another woozle has joined them. And so it seemed to be. There were the tracks crossing over each other here, getting muddled up with each other there. But quite plainly, every now and then, the tracks of four sets of paws. I think, said Piglet, when he had licked the tip of his nose too, and found that it brought very little comfort, I think that I have d -d -d just remembered something. I've j j remembered something that I f forgot to do yesterday, and I sh shan't be able to do t -t 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 tomorrow. So I s suppose I really ought to go back and do it now. We'll do it this afternoon, Piglet, and I will come with you, said Pooh. Oh, it isn't the sort of thing you can d -d 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 do in the afternoon, Pooh, said Biglet quickly. It's a very b -b -b particular morning thing and that has to be done in the morning. And if b -b -b possible, uh, between the hours of, what would you say the time was? Hmm, about twelve, said Winnie the Boo, looking at the sun. Between, uh, as I was saying, the hours of t -t -t twelve and twelve five. So really, dear old b -b -b Pooh, if you'll excuse me. What's that? Pooh looked up at the sky, and then, as he heard the whistle again, he looked up into the branches of a big oak tree. And then. He saw a friend of his. Oh, it's Christopher Robin, he said. Ah, then you'll be all right, said Piglet. You'll be quite safe with him. G goodbye, Pooh. And he trotted off home as quickly as he could, very glad to be out of all danger again. Christopher Robin came slowly down his tree. Silly old bear, he said. What were you doing? First, 
you went round the spinney twice by yourself. And then Piglet ran after you and you went round again together. And then you were just going round a fourth time. Oh, wait a moment, said Winnie the Pooh, holding up his paw. He sat down and thought in the most thoughtful way he could think. Then he fitted his paw into one of the tracks. And then he scratched his nose twice and stood up. Yes, said Winnie the Pooh. I see now, said Winnie the Pooh. I have been foolish and deluded, said he. And I am a bear of no brain at all. You are the best bear in all the world, said Christopher Robin soothingly. Am I? said Boo, hopefully. And then he brightened up suddenly. Anyway, he said, it is nearly luncheon time. And so he went home for it. And so ends chapter three of Winnie the Pooh by A. a. Mill. <laughs> Silly old bear. Well, I hope you've enjoyed these two chapters on our latest episode of your Story Corner, the podcast. If you'd like to listen to more stories, of course. You can listen to all the previous episodes for some more Winnie the Pooh, Peter Rabbit, Benjamin Bunny, some Peter Pan, or maybe the Ugly Duckling. All there waiting for you, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, for you to download whenever you need some comforting words or a bedtime story. And we'll be back again with another episode and more stories to help you relax and unwind. But now, if it's time, you can close your eyes, drift off to sleep, and join us again soon for another episode of Your Story Corner. Until then, good night, sleep tight. Bye for now.